We've seen how regular demand curves are just inverse slices of the more general demand functions where we hold other prices and income fixed. And it turns out the same thing is true for compensated demand curves. The underlying compensated demand functions where the compensated demand curves are just inverse slices of those more general functions. To see how we would derive those functions, we need to remind ourselves what compensated demands are actually all about. When we talk about compensated demands, we're talking about demands that tell us how much of a good you're going to consume at different prices, assuming you always end up on the same indifference curve, assuming we always give you enough compensation to reach that indifference curve. So if the prices form a very steep budget line, we'll give you enough money to get to a tangency like this. Or if they form a more shallow budget line, we'll give you enough money to reach a point like this. Regardless of what the prices are, we'll ensure that you end up on the same indifference curve and we'll find the least expensive way to get you to that indifference curve. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a minimization problem exactly like the one that we used when we first calculated substitution effects. Because after all, these are just substitution effects that are going on in here. What we're going to do is we're going to minimize how much money we have to give you. We're going to minimize how much spending you're going to do, how much you spend on good one, and how much you spend on good two, by choosing a bundle such that you reach this same indifference curve all the time. So we need a utility function to represent the underlying indifference map. So we'll use the same utility function we've been using, just x1 times x2. So we're going to minimize the expenditure necessary to get you to that indifference curve to get you your utility to be equal to some level u. Once we've written down that problem, we can write the Lagrangian function for that problem. That's just equal to the thing that we're trying to optimize, in this case minimize, p1x1 plus p2x2 plus lambda times the constraint and the constraint in this case is that we always want to get you to the same indifference curve, the constraint with all the terms collected to one side. So u minus x1, x2. Then we derive the first order conditions, the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to the two things we're choosing, with respect to x1 would give us p1 minus lambda x2 and we're going to set that to 0. Then the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x2 which will give us p2 minus lambda times x1. We'll set that equal to 0. And once we have those two equations we can use them to eliminate the, uh, the lambda. So we just take the negative term to the other side p1 is equal to lambda x2, p2 is equal to lambda x1. We divide the equations by each other and can, can cancel the lambdas. And then we can solve for x2 so that x2 is just equal to p1 over p2 times x1. The final first order condition is that we have to differentiate the Lagrangian with respect to lambda. And what we get back is this, which is, once we set it equal to 0, just equal to this. So x1 times x2 is going to be equal to whatever utility level we're trying to compensate you to. Since we have an equation for x2 just in terms of x1, we can substitute that. So we get x1 times p1 over p2. times x1. That has to be equal to u. So x1 times x1 will just be x1 squared. 
and we can multiply both sides by B, P2 over P1. That'll get rid of this term here and put it on the other side as an inverse. So we'll get P2 divided by P1 times U. And now all we have to do is take the square root or take this to the exponent 1 half. When we do that, we get x1 is equal to p2 over p1 times u, all taken to the power 1 half. Then we can take this and substitute in for x1 here. So we'll get x2 is equal to p1 divided by p2 times x1, which we've solved for to be this, so times p2 over p1 times u to the 1 half. And then we can simplify that. Uh, there's a p1 here and a p1 to the 1 half here. When we divide, we have to subtract the exponents, so we'll end up with a p1 to the 1 half. We have a p2 to the 1 half and a p2 to the 1. We subtract the 1 from the 1 half. That gives us a negative 1 half. So that would be p to the one, p2, this was p1, to the 1 half in the denominator. And we'd still have the u to the 1 half. So we can combine that again, and we get p1 over p2 times u to the 1 half. So now we have two functions for x1 and x2 that are just a function of the prices and the utility level. And those functions tell us how much you're going to consume at different prices assuming we give you enough money to reach this utility level. So these are what we call compensated demand functions. They tell us for any set of prices, P1 and P2, and any indifference curve, any utility level, what you're going to end up consuming if we compensate you to make it possible for you to reach that indifference curve. Finally, we could even calculate how much compensation we have to give you, or how much of a budget we have to give you. To find that, we just take our uh, values for x1 and x2 and put them back into the equation for our expenditure. So we would have uh, p1 times x1, which is p2 over p1 times u to the 1 half plus the second term, p2 times x2, which is this, p1 over p2 times u to the 1 half. And we can again simplify here. We have a p1 to the 1 and the p1 to the 1 half. So that just becomes a p1 to the 1 half. We have a p2 to the 1 half. and a u to the 1 half. And in the second term, we have a p2 to the 1 and a p2 to the 1 half. Subtract that, we get a p2 to the 1 half. We have a p1 to the 1 half and a u to the 1 half. So that's just equal to, let me put it up here, the compensated budget is just equal to those two things summed together. They're the same term, so they're just 2 times p1 p2 u to the 1 half. And that's how you calculate a compensated demand function. And then the compensated demand curve is just an inverse slice of these functions. It's an inverse slice that holds the price of the other good and the indifference curve fixed and just tells us how much we're going to buy of the good as the price of that good changes 
and we always stay on the same indifference curve.